Tech News Weekly is sponsored by GoDaddy. Get a .com domain name for only $249 by using offer code QUEENS at checkout. Starting Tech News Weekly in 3, 2, 1... Hey everybody, welcome to Tech News Weekly. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by John as I meet you every week. How are you doing, John? Hey, Andrew. How's it going? Pretty good. You know, an eventful week, an exciting week, a lot of new products coming out, a lot of new products have come out, so I have been very busy upgrading technology all week. <laughs> Tech overload for you? It is a tremendous tech overload. I, I'm barely dressed for this show. I'm not wearing any pants. I'm wearing a, a t-shirt that I wore to bed last night. I am. Uh, I also had a, a rough night, you know, with drinking and all. But uh, I'm ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to be here. Suck it up. I know. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta suck it up. I gotta do the show. But before we start the show, I gotta thank our sponsor, and that's GoDaddy, uh, the home of the 249 domain name. And I'll tell you why they are amazing. $2.49 for a .com domain name. We're going to be starting a new promotion next week, actually, also, uh, which I think you guys are going to love. But $2.49 domain names, .com domain names, when you use offer code QUEENS at checkout. And this is why I like GoDaddy. I look at GoDaddy as 21st century real estate. And the reason why I say that is because you are investing in a domain name. You're investing in property, digital property. And the day may come where you're going to either sell this thing, make a couple of bucks on it, or you're going to be able to build something amazing on top of it. Uh, and, and it's unbelievable. I absolutely love GoDaddy. Uh, I support what they're doing. And I want you guys to check them out too. Uh, 249 domain name.com domain name by going to GoDaddy.com and using offer code Queens at checkout. Thank you, GoDaddy, for supporting what I was wrong show <laughs> for supporting <laughs> Tech News Weekly. You know, my dog is going berserk right now. And uh, all I could do is just stare at him lose his mind over god knows what john why don't you go into the you're first losing your mind i am why don't you go into the first story and i'm sure it's going to be about apple yeah we can start off with the apple stuff because that's i think pretty much the entire week right there yes there's been other announcements but none bigger than what apple has unveiled at their oh, we still have a lot to cover event uh the first thing they announced are new haswell based macbook pros which i know Andrew is absolutely absolutely excited about because Haswell just offers so much better battery life for your MacBook. Oh, I mean performance um, also, uh, battery life, the video is done. It's it's actually, if you're not a Mac person, this is probably the best Windows computer you could buy, the best PC on the market right now. Right. They have uh, refreshed their entire MacBook line there. Uh, they now have a 13-inch system that starts at $12.99 and includes... A retina display, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, did not have a retina display before. Which one? 13 inch. No, it did. Did it? Okay. Yeah. And then they also have a 15 inch now with Haswell and Retina. No, I I, I think it's great. I, it's a great piece of hardware, and um, I'm coming, you know, to the point of upgrading very soon. I have a 2011 MacBook Pro, which has done really well for me, but I kind of want something a little bit more powerful. And uh, this is going to be it. I mean, I like the 13 inch. It starts at 1299. I, I the, the i5 is 1299. It's going to be a couple more bucks when you get the i7 and get it, you know, fully loaded. But uh, well worth it in my opinion. I'm a big fan of the MacBook Pros. Uh, tell me if I'm mistaken or not on this this yeah. particular spec. Um, they've added 802.11 AC Wi-Fi on the MacBooks now, yeah. whereas before they did not have that. Correct? They did not. Okay. They did not because uh, the the airport extreme supports it, right? Yes. And what's what is it? Mimo? They're talking about. They were, they were talking about Mimo. Yeah. I'm not familiar with it. And I know a lot of people that are watching us may or may not be familiar with it. Once you, it, it, do you know, it's what, just a method for providing higher bandwidth and and packet prioritization type of thing where where it can it can handle a larger volume of data better than without it. Okay. Which a lot of gamers love. If if you're if you're a gamer and you're looking for a router and it doesn't have Mimo on it, don't even bother. Yeah, I mean these are good pieces of hardware. Uh, 
uh, I'm probably going to get one right now. Uh, I was talking about it earlier with with Jess. There's so many upgrades I need to do. I don't even know where to begin. Obviously, I need a, I need to get the MacBook for because it's faster and better. And obviously, I want to get it, so I'm going to get it. But I have to get the Xbox to review. <laughs> I have to get the PlayStation to review. I have to get the iPad to review. And the way that I justify to her is by convincing her that I'm going to make the money back by doing the reviews because I, you know, from the ads, I can make the money back. So we're not really losing anything. Right. So that's the story. And I'm sticking to it, John. And you're right. going to stick to it as well. So if anybody asks, we make a lot of money from these reviews that we do. What do I get out of all this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if you're a good boy, I'll, I'll get you an SD card. An SD card. A very nice 32 gig SD card. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, obviously, they also unveiled Mavericks, which is their latest and greatest operating system from Apple. Uh, the latest version of OS 10. And the surprise here was that it's free. They've gone yeah. to a free model. They're not charging you for these upgrades anymore. Uh, they were barely charging you before, and there was obviously no you know, authentication on this thing. So anybody could pretty much get a copy and install it on a machine. And the way that they kind of justified it is that cash. if you're going to pirate a $20 you know, piece of software, you were never going to buy it anyway. So, yeah, I mean, they're justified in thinking that. But now it's free. What do you think of that? You and also now you can't go into a store and buy it. There's no. I, I don't think that's that's ever been an issue. I think the way Apple does things is that they think of the future more than most companies. I think, in, in terms of bringing those types of trends quicker to people than you would see other companies. So the fact that you can't get this anywhere in an actual retail store, I I don't think that's a big deal. I mean, yeah, if. If you, because if you think about it, really where the bread and butter is in terms of the operating system is people buying new Mac devices. It's hardware. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what's interesting? I was having a discussion with somebody and, you know, I, I went and got an SD, uh, a flash, you know, USB flash drive so I could make a bootable copy of it. And I installed it because I, I, I like to do clean installs. And someone told me, like, listen, you don't need to do that. The Mac auto detects it. You don't have a hard drive and it downloads it from the server. Like if, if your hard drive doesn't have it because of the BIOS, that that's the fallback. Because think about it. If you can't, let, let's say you, you messed up the hard drive and now you need a new hard drive in this thing. And you replace it. How are you going to install it? You should always it? do a backup though. You should I mean, that is one yeah. of the things is, is that, that I, I think they need to do a better job of you know telling you how to make a backup uh, i guess they want you to i mean there to are ways there. to do it but it, it's almost one of those well-kept secret type of things well the fact that there's no such thing as a clean install like nobody does a clean install yeah you just override you know the components and i guess it's not necessary anymore i mean that that's an old school windows thing right you get the new version of windows you don't want to upgrade to it you just want to put a clean install of it I guess so that's you, not the case. So you, of course, have installed this, right? I, I, yes, I have installed it. So, so what's your opinion of it now that it's finally out here with all the features that we've been promised for a few months now? Well, I, I've installed it and I've been using it since the day that it came out. I installed it on two computers. I have to tell you, it is a great operating system. It's, it's, there's no drastic improvement, obviously, from the previous version, but. It's a little things. I mean, it's a little bit more refined. It's a little snappier. It's a little uh, smoother as far as you know getting stuff done. I, I just think they, they overall they they cleaned up some of the issues that they had. They didn't add anything that that I think. Oh my goodness! Look look how great this is. It actually does handle memory better. A lot of the memory leak issues that I was having with the previous operating system are not there. Mm -hmm. Um. It, it's doing some weird stuff with the memory. I, I don't know offhand, but it's handling it a little bit better. Applications seem to be running a little bit better also. iTunes, uh, between a new version and this version of OS X, it's running a little bit better. So it's these small little things that have helped. Uh, I haven't tried that double dual screen thing, uh, which I know a lot of people that's a big deal for, but I haven't done that yet. So th there are still things that I haven't done, but uh, overall, I, I think it's a decent operating system. There's, there's and nothing you can get it for free. And it's free, so you can't. How could you lose? I also got i got the whole iLife suite. Also, um, okay. iPhoto. 
<laughs> you know what's interesting in the pictures, the promotional pictures, they made iPhoto look totally redone and oh, look how nice it looks now. It's the same exact thing. That demo they did with the iLife stuff was just awful. When he when that guy was doing the pages thing, yeah, I, I don't use. Pages, I, I, so. I don't know what that was. That was just a, a disaster of a demo to me. And this is my theory: the last two events that they have held, they've really concentrated on iWorks and you know their word processing and their and their Excel and all that stuff. The reason why I think they're doing that is because there's been such backlash on the in the PC community about Windows 8 and how a lot of people feel that this isn't for the power user anymore. It's not for the traditional desktop user. They've they've added this weird UI and it's foreign and they've dumbed it down. I think this is Apple's way of saying like, "Hey, listen, you want to do word processing? Come on over. Spend 2500 bucks." I still think that anybody that's doing hardcore word processing and that kind of stuff is still going to get a Microsoft Office suite. Yeah, and listen, I have Office, and it's great. So I don't know. I, I, I think it's that thing that they're doing. I also, uh, I am a fan of the desktop. And they made it very clear during this event that they held that they are sticking to the desktop. They're not going to have this Frankenstein-style operating system where you have it's on tablets, it's on this, it's on that. They want it to be, you know, phone is one thing and iOS is one thing, mobile and desktop is another. I, I think that's the right way to go. I mean, yeah, you can kind of come close between the two, but the way that Microsoft does it, it just does not work trying to do two things yeah, or one thing for everything. It just does not work. You, I, you can't have what's, work, what's optimized for a phone work perfectly fine on, on a desktop. Yeah, it, 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 the, op the optimizations are a detriment to people that use desktop. Yeah. And I don't think Microsoft really understands or comprehends that particular point very well. Uh, Arlene or Arlie in our Arlie in our chat room. I don't know why I saw an N uh, brought up something interesting. They have really screwed over the podcast. I mean, I'm a podcaster. John is a podcaster. A lot of our viewers are from the IIB, the Internet Broad Internet. International Association of Internet Broadcasting community here that we have, and the complaints that we've I've seen about GarageBand killing all the presets for podcasts, it's astonishing to me. And I'm actually really surprised that they've done that. I, I don't understand why, because they've been so friendly towards the podcasters, and you know, iTunes would pretty much change the entire concept of what podcasting is. It's really alarming that they've done that. They've cut it out. So a lot of people are unhappy with that, too. You got you got to wonder if that's just something that they kind of just forgot about or if that was an actual decision they made to specifically do that. Uh, I think that I don't know why they killed it. It's weird. I, 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 don't, I have no answer. I, because I don't that's know. just something that's bizarre to do. If, if, if it's just a preset, then why take it out? It, it, they, they cut out like the ducking feature. You could do ducking. You could do uh, some gating. You could do chapters. They cut that out too. I, I haven't really spent a lot of time with it because I haven't used GarageBand since uh, you started working for me. Mm -hmm. I haven't edited a thing, so I have, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so I have to start doing it now. <laughs> and you don't use GarageBand, so I don't know. Uh, let's talk about the iPad, John. Yes, the Be iPad. Beautiful. You know, I have mixed feelings about this. Okay, um, They announced uh, the new, what they're calling the iPad Air. It's not just the iPad now. It's the iPad Air. I'll tell, it's you, a, it's, I'll tell you, it is very smart. It's really, uh, it's a very smart thing because now all these people are going to are gonna say, wow, you know, I need to get the Air version of it. I, see, it doesn't make a difference to me what they call it. It's still the iPad. It's not like they have a different version of it that's heavier. I think they will. I mean, they do, but... No, I think they're going to do that. I think the next the, the next version of these things, you're going to have the iPad, which is going to be the lower end, the iPad 2 version. It'll probably be plasticky. You're going to have the iPad Air, which is going to be their higher end model, and then the iPad Mini. So the iPad Air, why, I think the reason why they're calling that is because they've got this thing down to a pound now. It was 
almost a pound and a half. So they knocked out almost a half pound out of this thing, which I mean, is that's absolutely amazing that yeah. they can even do that. That is that's, there's that much they can change. I mean, when you think I about think, a half a pound, John, it's not much to most people. I think it's it, it, no, but it, and, it is significant when you have a device like this. Yeah, here, here's one of my biggest complaints about the iPad is the weight. Because it's just, you know, it's nice. I like the size and everything. But after you hold that sucker for a little while, it becomes just kind of a little bit unwieldy to keep holding for a long period of time. As opposed to the iPad mini. I'm not, I, I don't have a mini. I have no interest in a mini. Um, I, I like the, the larger 9.7 inch screen. Uh, I'm going to be picking one up next week. I don't know if I'm going to go wait online or I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do, actually. Yeah, but when, you, when you're when you comparing the weight of these two devices... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, I, it's a major the iPad difference. mini, it, it's just so much easier to hold in your hand than, than the iPad Air. You know, something that they, that they did not really concentrate on during the event, and I was surprised about, is the fact that this is, this is also running the 64-bit architecture that they have on the iPhone. Yeah. And really... It is another step in closing that gap between the PC and the tablet world. You know, the, the, and listen, I don't know, maybe, who knows? Maybe it doesn't do anything to the performance. It doesn't change anything with the user experience. But I think that's a significant achievement that this thing is a 64 bit processor inside. You're able to do a lot of computing on this thing and probably you're going to get if the same, if not better performance than what you have at home. Yeah, uh, you know, on, on a laptop that 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 A seven chipset is pretty good. They also have that M seven motion chip, which I I still well, don't that really is going to take more care to make sure that it, that it's up optimized for sixty four bits. So. Yeah, I mean, of course, the detriment to all of that is you know applications and everything is going to be slightly larger. So you know, sixteen gigabytes is that going to cut it these days? Now, a lot of people are already kind of bordering on the line of 16 gigabytes yeah you can get by with it but you're starting to cut kind of close to yeah and needing a 32 gigabyte yeah i i storage i was one of the people that really stood by 16 gigs is more than enough you don't need more than that but the last year these applications have gotten much larger you know you're not downloading these tiny little apps anymore some of these apps are a gig or two no, and especially if you're doing gaming a lot of these games are very large yeah so you're running out of space i mean i've had it happen on the ipad multiple times where i've run out of space i i can't store any music anymore because i constantly run out of space when i'm downloading games and i'm always deleting stuff you know you could always re-download it but uh, now that these things are capable of shooting 1080p video and they're able to do uh, you know higher performance uh, hd content and you're able to do uh, higher quality gaming. Yeah, you know what, John? 32 should be the entry model. 3264 and 128. I think if anybody's smart enough, they're going to spend the extra hundred dollars for for that little upgrade. I, I think in a long run, if you if you're going to have your device for at least two years, you should just automatically go to 32 gigabytes. That, that way, you know you should be you should be covered for the next two years, perfectly fine at that level. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I did with my iPhone. I mean, yeah, I probably could have got by with 16 gigs. But to be honest, there's a lot of times where if I'm going on a road trip and I just want to load it up, and then that's another thing. If you just want to load it up, 16 gigabytes is nothing when you're putting m videos and movies and music on there. I mean, yeah, you can connect it to Wi-Fi and, and to a cellular network and download stuff from the cloud, but then you're using data and... Uh, that that can be a whole issue, especially if you're staying at a hotel. That's the yeah. thing I hate the most is when you're at a hotel, you you need Wi-Fi, but the hotel's Wi-Fi is just so slow that it, it prevents you from actually watching videos on the internet. I have yet to encounter that with the hotel. That's because you never go anywhere. Well, every hotel when you I've do, gone. you stay at the you stay at hotels that are like you're paying five hundred dollars a night. Yeah. I'm not staying at the slum in uh, for the Wi-Fi. Um, what do you think of the Mac Pro? Well, I mean, let's you, talk about the iPad you know Mini. Let me okay. I think this is this is significant. Go go ahead because I'm surprised. Now I'm surprised at your I, I reaction. Know. Well, no. Why are you Why are you passing over iPad Mini? Go ahead. Go go ahead. Go ahead. No, why are you passing it over? I um, I'm a little biased. I don't care for it. Why? I don't know. Too little. 
too little. See, I think that's absolutely a joke because I think the iPad mini is in some ways better than the iPad. Okay, tell me why. I'm curious. In, in terms of size and portability and just price, I, I think because it's it, it's hard to explain because the way I want to say this is that you can get the smaller version. It's going to be less money, but it's going to be nearly identical. It is nearly identical now with the iPad. They've upped the specifications on it. It's got the same CPU in it. It's got the same display in it, whereas last year it did not, which a lot of people really did want an iPad mini with their retina display, and that was kind of holding a lot of people back from actually getting an iPad mini. It was like, well, you know, retina is a big thing now, and so if you want retina, you should just go with the iPad. But now that the mini has a, a retina display in it as well and the same processor, I think that makes them very much identical and very much harder to decide between the two of them which one did it get because a lot of times yeah you can get the larger screen that can be nice but in some ways you can knock off a hundred bucks and get the mini version and it's going to suffice just as well as that larger 9.7 inch ipad does i i guess it, it just comes down to aesthetics if you like the larger screen or not right that's that's all it's coming down to at this point yeah I don't know, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of afraid to go to the Mini because I'm still going to spend 400 bucks, and I don't know if I'm going to be that happy with the smaller screen, but for what I use the iPad for, you may be right, the Mini may be the perfect device for me. I use it in bed. I, I go, I, I think that's all for I do. anybody that, yeah, I mean, if you're holding it a lot of times, I think it's a better device. It's yeah. a, Yes, it's a little bit smaller. You're going to sacrifice that, but it's also just going to be easier to take around with you and hold in your hands. Do you think that the price is too high on these devices, especially the no. Mini at 399 I don't think so. I, I mean, the market you know, dictates wh where you're going to be priced at and, and these premium tablets. I'm not talking about you know, a Nexus, which isn't a, it's not a premium tablet. But when, you're, when you get into the premium level, uh, they're all priced the same. So you're saying that the the iPads are premium tablet compared to the Nexus, yeah, and the Kindle Fires. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But what what makes that distinction? Just just price alone, or just the operating system that Apple creates? Well, that, that's the same argument. Why, why you know people consider the Mac a premium, right? Uh, and I'm using air quotes when I say premium because <laughs> I don't I don't know if it's necessarily a premium or not. I don't necessarily agree with that, but. That's the argument, right? It's not just one thing. You're getting really good hardware inside. You're getting it's aesthetically pleasing. It's a beautiful device. The display is beautiful. Uh, you're going to get a really good battery life and the operating system. And it's the 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 ecosystem is kind of mature compared to what the other ones are. Uh, Android still doesn't feel refined to me, and I'm an Android user, but and I say that all the time. And I, people get very upset, but it's really not. There, it has its issues. The Nexus is an entry level tablet. The pr you're not getting the but performance. Specifications why it's it's nearly identical to the iPad. Uh, yeah, uh, not display though, right? What the display the is? It's 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 still a high definition display, but it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, not by much though. Yeah, I, I, I mean, mean you're you're talking just a little bit. It, it's a total package thing. Uh, but you know, look look at it like this. Uh, on the Windows side, the Surface RT is super expensive. Yeah. Nokia, which we're going to get to that story, has announced their 10-inch model at $499. So these That's are not crazy. cheap. I mean, you're not. it's not a cheap device. It's not. I mean, that's a problem to me. No. I, I, you know, honestly, I, I wish... That the iPad Mini was about twenty dollars cheaper. I think that would have been a very smart move if they came in and said iPad Mini with Retina display, three seventy nine. I think that would have been really good for marketing. You're absolutely right. Marketing wise, it would have been a great thing. What what they should have done, in my opinion, the regular because the iPad Mini is still on the market, and mm -hmm. that should have been fifty dollars cheaper. This should have been twenty dollars cheaper, and then you have you know two forty nine. Uh, three forty nine or three seventy nine. Then you go into three ninety nine for the iPad and four ninety nine for the iPad Air. 
their pricing structure sure. is a little off, and I think that has to do with the fact that the that the iPad two is still on the market. That iPad two is going to be gone. That's just something that I think, as far as I'm concerned, everybody that I've ever seen an article about this iPad this week, it's like, why? Why do they still have the iPad two? Nobody can come up with a good reason why they have the iPad two or why anybody should buy an iPad two at this point. I I, I could tell you a good reason why they have it. Very easily. Why? Because they are not ready to put out whatever that entry level iPad is going to be yet. That's the only reason. And well, I've seen them and I've if, seen I've see, seen the, the, way the apologists think- out there make up, you know, make up reasons like, well, this device is not really for the consumer, it's for institutions and corporations. Uh, you know, I've a lot of companies yeah. I, I also think heard stupid. I also heard the dumbest thing where someone says, well, you know, there's a lot of third party devices out there that are supporting a 30 pin connector. And that's what this device is for. There are adapters that they sell. Apple doesn't care that that some stupid company is using a 30 pin adapter. They're changing. They're revolving. The reason why this device is still on the market is because they have not created that next device that's going to take over that entry level iPad. And I think it's smart. Have a Retina version but they and a non-Retina do. version. They, they, they kind of do, though. It's Which called one? the iPad Mini. Not at the screen size. But, see, that's the thing. In I agree opinion, with you. I agree no, with no, you no, 100%. Let me, let, 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 let me finish. I, I think that they should, in terms of price, they're both the same price. The iPad Mini with Retina and the iPad 2 are both $399, correct? Yeah. Why in God's name yeah, that's is the, the iPad 2 $399? dollars There's no way the iPad 2 is worth $399. No, I, if I you're going to spend you. that much money, get a freaking iPad mini. Yes, it's a little bit smaller screen, but you're going to get a so much better experience and better technology compared to the iPad 2. I mean, honestly, it's the iPad 2 is not worth $399. It's not even worth $299. No, it, it's, it's quite awkward, right? The pricing structure is quite it is. awkward. It, and it, it doesn't is. and it almost they, they didn't like something even drop the price. Yeah. They, they they were they've been selling this device now for a year and a half at $399. Yeah. I don't know, John. You know, I, I mean, my theory is that they're going to have a replacement for it and that's why it's still here. But for the time being, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I think it's a detriment to Apple. And Steve Jobs would never have allowed that yeah. whatsoever. Well, th- th- uh, it just shows you exactly. It's it's the change of the guard. This is the, this is it what's is. happened. And for for a company like Apple, and and I would have expected better from Tim Cook as well to realize that this is a device that's far superior to anything else that they sell, even at that price point. They have an iPad Mini. If that's the price point that you're looking to spend at, get an iPad Mini. If you yeah. can't afford the iPad at four ninety nine, then spend three ninety nine for the iPad Mini. Forget the iPad two at three ninety nine. It's just not worth it in any sense. But let me ask you, John, uh, and and this speaks a lot about the market. At that iPad two is three generations behind at this point. Yeah, and it is still considered one of the better tablets on the market. Why? <laughs> you tell me. I, I, I think, I, and CNET really hammered Apple over this, too. CNET had, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, they had at least three or four articles asking, why is Apple still selling the iPad 2? I understand. Listen, I understand having a Retina and not Retina version. I, I think that's smart. I think they're going to have to do that. I think now that they have the iPad Air name, it, it kind of shows you the direction they're going in. But all the other pieces have not been put in place yet. I, I think when when that happens, we'll get a better understanding of their structure. But to have the iPad just change its name and still have a, a three generation old device on the market and not have you know, listen, they could have done they could have taken the the fourth gen one, put it for fifty dollars less. It could have been you know four fifty four forty nine, and you had that in the iPad Air. I don't know. You know, the thing that really, really makes this whole situation laughable is the fact that they no longer sell the iPad 3. Yeah. Or the 4. Or the 4. But they still sell you an iPad 2. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we're going to see it. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, in, a, in another year we see, hmm, 
Well, that's weird. My webcam just turned on. <laughs> I'm hacking you. Sorry. That's me. Wow, that is weird. So, uh, speaking of crazy prices, yeah. <laughs> they finally announced pricing and availability for the Mac Pros. Okay, this is so something that we've been waiting for uh, since June or July now. You Now, you defended, during the event, we, we covered this, I, I was surprised, and a little not surprised, but more surprised, that you were defending the price, and you said something interesting, you know, everybody's screaming that 3000 up, and you said, but look at the components. Yeah. So go and, and, and I kind of agree that three thousand dollars is pretty steep for for a device like this. But when when you really look at the technology inside of it and how much it actually costs, for example, I gave the the example of um, the graphics cards in there. It's dual graphic cards, and Apple's not going to put something cheap, and they're they're going to go with something very high end. So you're probably going to look probably at. $400 each for those cards. So that's $800. Almost $1,000 of that device is in the graphics cards alone. Yeah. Plus you have the SSD in there, which I think they said was one terabyte SSD or something like that. I don't know if it, if that's starting. I think it might be the max. That might Yeah, that might have been the max. Something yeah. like that. But they, they have... Um, no, it's 256 SSD, excuse me. Um, 12 gigabytes of RAM... Uh, 3.7 gigahertz quad core Xeon CPU. Those are all things that just you know dollar by dollar it really adds up. You, even if they sold this, I think at two thousand dollars, I don't think they'd be making a profit on this device. I mean, listen, this, uh, you're, this you're probably getting, is. Go ahead. I, I would like if if I would love for us to kind of spec this thing out for next week. If we were to go and buy these components ourselves how much it would cost us. It's probably going to be right around $2,000. You think so? Yeah. So, 2000 or a little over 2000 I mean, a video card, let's say a grand for the video card, the the quad-core, the new uh, E5 Xeon processor. By the way, this is the base price. Yeah, yeah. By, yeah it, it is. It just goes up from there, which is insane. And yeah, the Mac Pros have always been kind of expensive, but... Because it's such a smaller size and less upgradable than Mac Pros in the past, people were kind of hoping this be a little bit cheaper. You know, I would I would not have been surprised. I didn't expect them to do that, but I would not have been surprised if they said, you know, it's going to be a little cheaper because you can't upgrade this thing. So yeah, here, here's the stats with the one gig, one terabyte flash storage. That's their top end. It goes all the way up to sixty four gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of flash storage. That's going to be insanely expensive and the funny part is that they're actually comparing this to a mac mini Who in is? terms of the apple apple said that the machine is as quiet as a mac mini That's which really is kind funny. of funny they're comparing a three thousand dollar device to a six hundred dollar device and it's coming in december but then again you also raise a, a, a point as far as price goes is the fact that they're actually assembling these things here in the United States, and that might add a premium to the cost That's going to well. add some sort of premium, but also Apple looks at it in this... I mean, that we're not the target audience, obviously, for this product. We're not, they're not... It, it, it's no, for, but we should be. We should be. You should the, be. The problem is be. that... Yeah, but we're not. I mean, honestly, this is out of my price range. It'd be nice to have, but as far as I'm concerned, these devices are for much larger companies. Than, than what GFQ is. Yeah, sure. I mean, that, that's that's the thing. But, you know, if, if we were to... Let's say right now we went out and we assembled this thing. We, we put one together. Uh, we got a Xeon processor and we got, you know, the RAM and we got the video cards and we built a Hackintosh. It's probably going to cost us about 2500 bucks. Hackintosh I built, the PC that I have here, is about $1,500. Okay. And, and you cut corners. Yeah, Absolutely. So I, I, I mean, could easily have spent two grand on this thing. Easily, easily. easily. So that three thousand dollar price range is not that insane when you think about you know the the overall and you you think about the overall you know components in it. And number two, nobody else is competing with them in this spectrum. So of course they could put a premium price on there. There's no competition. Who's competing True. with Apple in this sense? Who who's building a server grade? Uh, a server grade machine for video processing. There's nobody. You don't see Dell no. doing it. You don't see HP doing it. You don't see 
uh, any of them doing it. So obviously they, they could control the market. This is their market and this is what they're doing. It, Joe in the chat room also brings up another point that a larger company would be mounting this in Iraq, which this device doesn't lend itself to very well. Yeah, he's right. They, they made this thing, to, and this is very funny, in that promotional shot they, that they were showing um, during the event, they had this thing hooked up to some video suite that somebody was working in. It, it just looked a little silly. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry, but this whole thing is supposed to be put on your desk, and, and these people that are working with these things... They don't want them on their desk. That's just going to take up space for monitors and, and everything else. I don't know. Well, we'll see. But overall, I thought it was a decent Apple event. I, I didn't find anything wrong with it. I thought this was one of the better ones. Uh, Mavericks is fine. Yeah. The iPads are good. Uh, the MacBook Pros, I, I'm, I like. I'm sad, though, that now we're, we're at the point where Apple no longer has any sort of surprises. It's, it's Their events are completely predictable. Yes, you can speculate that they might have, might, they might throw one or two things in there, but they never really do, such as the Apple TVs. People thought, mm, maybe there might be an Apple TV update, but that never happened as well. So it's like, and, and not only that, but I think one of the things people were largely disappointed with overall is the fact there was no fingerprint or touch ID sensor in the new iPads. Everybody thought, well, the new the new iPhone has it. Why wouldn't the iPads have it? I, I I'll tell you, I used a fingerprint sensor on one of my friend's phones, and the fact that you don't have to put a password in every time you do something uh, it goes a long way. I, and I'm surprised that they didn't add it. Yeah, the only thing people can can come up with is that there is a supply constraint. As far as the products or, or, or the materials that they need to create those touch ID sensors, yeah. such as the Sapphire. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So from that standpoint, I understand. But at the same time, it's one of those things that it's Apple. If they don't do these things, it's going to be a disappointment. Because Apple always does something of an impossible task. I mean, listen. They create I th- these devices that are amazing. But then you know, lately, it's almost feeling like a lot of times... We're just not quite getting to the point that everybody expects Apple to be at anymore. I mean, Apple TV is another thing. You know, I'm not talking about the actual physical TV, that that mythical device that people have been talking about. But I'm talking about the actual thing that we have right now. Uh, I, people were disappointed we got no up, updates on that. I think that's going to be a whole separate event uh, because they're going to they're going to talk about the big partnerships they're doing and the expansion, all that stuff. So. I think that's something that we're going to see probably in March. I think they're going to probably have like a March event for that. I don't see an yeah. Apple, you know, I don't care for the Apple wristwatch. I don't care for any of that. That's kind of the next thing I want. I also think the other thing that they should be doing is better gaming on the TV with your iPad and iPhone. Absolutely. That's the next thing they need to kind of work on because they can really dominate the living room if that's the case. Because mm-hmm. I'm a, I mean, we spoke about it last week, but. I was surprised there was no mention of that. Hey, John, BlackBerry yes. Messenger. Oh, boy. How's it going? Uh, you know, I finally come to the conclusion with this thing now. Yeah. Uh, and this is something that I was kind of waiting for just to see how, how this would actually all work together, how it would pan out. So if everybody remembers, BBM started rolling this thing out literally a month ago and then pulled it because they were having issues with their servers. So they pulled it, and it took them a month to start rolling it out again. So what they've implemented now is a sign-up sheet or a waiting list. So you can download this this application now, but you're immediately put onto a waiting list. From what I hear, they're only registering like 5,000 people a day or an hour. I'm not exactly sure what the time period is, but I heard something about 5,000 people uh, every so often. So... I waited probably about 36 hours after downloading the application in order to get signed up. And when you sign up, it says, all right, well, once you get the email, come back to the application, click this button, and we'll let you register. I never got an email. Never. I never got an email from BlackBerry saying, hey, you've made it to the front of the line. You're ready to sign up. I just kept uh, clicking on that button that says, all right, I got the email. And it finally let me through. I I never got got an email saying that. You got an email saying that you were at the front of the line? I did, and I still have not been able to sign up because every time I go to sign up, it the application crashes on me. 
Hmm. Every time I hit submit, it'll crash. I can't. I gave up. I, I wow. literally tried for 20 minutes to sign up. I, I mean, they came the out with an update. Wednesday, I think they came out with an update because they had some sort of issue with fonts. Um, Apple, in one of the latest updates that Apple released, 7.0.3, they removed a font that BlackBerry used in their application. So they had to fix that. And that was one of the issues that they had. I wonder if they hired the same place that the Obama administration hired for the healthcare <laughs> website. Because I'm having the same they, exact... They've kind of... They really have botched this. They said that... Um, who was... I have the story in here, and I'm just going to try and find it real quick. BlackBerry. BBM Downloads. So for both iOS and Android, they hit 5 million downloads in 8 hours, according to BlackBerry. 5? How many? And... and, and Five million and 10, 10 million in twenty four hours are saying the most successful thing mind you've you, ever done. Mind you, these are just downloads. This this isn't how many people have actually continued through the sign up process and are continuing to use BBM. Um, when I started using this, once I signed up, it crashed literally within two minutes after using it. Luckily, I just uninstalled and reinstalled it, and it started working fine. But still, overall, it's sluggish. And the interface just isn't that great. I mean, when, when you're an Apple user, you're used to a spectacular interface that doesn't have any issues whatsoever. I'm sorry, but this interface for BBM, while it looks a lot like the application on a BlackBerry device, it just it's not what you're used to on an Apple device, and it doesn't function very well. Yeah. This for point. example, and, and, and I'll give you my biggest complaint here. Mm -hmm. This freaking action bar that they have between... The, the area where you're typing and the keyboard. It takes up so much freaking space that you're left with just this tiny little bit to actually see your chat and conversation. Uh, I, I haven't even gotten that far. And yes, you can't you can you can you can hide that, but then you can't attach a picture anymore. Oh God. What a mess. So I, I'm at the point where I don't care about BBM anymore. I tried it. I gave it a chance, and it's just totally worthless. They to are dead it, to you, John. They are. It, 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 yeah. it totally brought me back to those days of BlackBerry when it was like, God, I wish BlackBerry had a decent web browser. I mean, I've, I've developed post-traumatic stress from just trying to install this thing. <laughs> it's that bad. That bad. Well, the fact that he, I had to wait 36 hours to even sign up. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. This is their solution. This is dumb. Yeah. Hey, you know what isn't dumb? A lot of these Nokia phones that have been coming out. Yeah. Uh, Nokia had an event at uh, in Abu Dhabi. The same day as Apple. The same day as Apple. Great timing. Uh, wait, wait. Wasn't this also the same day that the Microsoft Surface came out? The Surface 2, yes. Which I have still not heard a single word about. Nope. Uh, listen, nobody has, a lot of people don't have that magic that Apple has with no, convincing still, everybody. For all the hype that, that Microsoft tried to come up with for the Surface 2, they announced that it was coming out October 22nd. Um, I haven't heard a peep since, not since they announced that it was going to come out October 22nd. I have not heard a peep. I know some people that got it actually, uh, the Surface 2. I, I haven't heard from them beyond that. I mean, I know that they got it. <laughs> that was it. Uh, Nokia Lumia 1520, their new flagship phone. Uh, Windows phone with 6-inch screen, 1080p display, 20-megapixel cam uh, camera, uh, $750 unsubsidized. Uh, subsidized, it's probably going to be $299. Uh, they really made a point at giving people these unsubsidized prices. Uh, it's going to be using GDR3, the latest and greatest operating system by Windows phone. Uh, a lot of, you know... Good specs, quad core Snapdragon 800 with two gigs of RAM, 1080p display, uh, all the works. Uh, the other thing, the, the thing that I actually like a lot is their new tablet, the Nokia 2520. Really? The 2520 is a 10 inch tablet with Windows RT and LTE with LTE, LTE for $499. That is a great deal. Really? LT yeah, tell me tell give me another device that you can get with LTE. Yeah, I guess, I guess you're right, but I would rather have Windows that. RT. I would rather have that than the Surface 2. Yeah. 
Uh, they also I'll agree unveiled, with you on that, but they also unveiled a a I believe the 1320, the Nokia Lumia 1320, which is a six inch di- display, and it is an affordable unsubsidized phone for three hundred and twenty nine dollars. Yeah, that's cool too. Listen, I, I think I think there's definitely a place for this, and this is how they're going to get market penetration. Out of all the devices that Nokia announced, uh, the one that I'm most excited about is the 1520. That sense, to me yeah. seems like a really, really cool device and something that I would be willing to try. Uh, as far as the tablet goes, I have absolutely no care for a Windows RT tablet whatsoever. Because there's no apps? There's no apps. It's just, uh, and it's Windows 8. There's just nothing about Windows 8 that I really like. Yeah. And it's okay, but I think it's fine for a phone. But really, even on a tablet, I'm very skeptical about using it. It's just. Uh, for my money, I'd rather just buy an iPad. Then go buy your iPad, John. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> um, I, I just, I mean, I understand your point of LTE for four ninety nine with the Nokia Lumia twenty five twenty, but it's just you still can't get over the fact that that's a gimmick just to buy get you to buy a device that Microsoft itself. It's having trouble selling. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how well it does. I, I, I am. Hey, John, do you want to uh, You have another story before we do our picks? Yeah, there's another one in here I can go to. Um, let me just scroll down here. And, and something that I'd like to get your opinion on is this. Um, well, there's a couple of stories. But Kia and Hyundai said that they might be offering Android-based in-car systems in all of their vehicles starting next year. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of these stories come out. Um, the in car systems that I have seen, uh, even the one I have in in my Infinity, it, it's a piece of junk. I'm not crazy about Forge Sync. I don't think it's it's as amazing as a lot of places have made it seem. If you you know you ask the right the right people, they'll tell you how great it is and how revolutionary it is. But I think it's sluggish and, and cheap. Um, I, I think they all suck. Um, so I'm kind of uh, I'm interested to see where this goes. I really think a software company has to do these interfaces. John, you know what we didn't get info on? Hmm. Okay, well, what and happened? And you're just now realizing this. Uh, yeah, you know, you, I, I just hit me. You know what we got no info on? What? Apple's uh the the Apple in car system. Yeah. What happened with that? I I think I I still think that's a ways off. No, but they announced it. Somebody did tell me that they think that the iPad Mini is perfect for their uh, in-car entertainment system and for their navigation because their GPS just sucks. So they'd rather have like an iPad Mini because it has voice directions. It's got great maps, improved maps. Let me say that. Hey, John, someone's at my door. Okay. And we'll take a pause now, I guess. I'll just edit all this out. Because sorry about that. Just tell them to go away. But I am surprised they they did not. And there's no information about it. I mean, what they showed do, was amazing. This, this is why. Why do you? What does it matter? I mean, yeah, that's cool. But I think whatever they're going to do is going to be its own separate event. Like you said, there, there are certain things that have to have their own separate event, and I think their their in car system is going to be their own event. Uh I don't know. I mean, the way that they made it seem like it was it was coming out, it was done. It was a uh, like it was going to be released in the twenty fourteen no. models, and that's no. It, but... That was a te- that was a teaser. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find the information. Initial release is twenty fourteen. So I guess I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess you're right. They're gonna have their own own event for that, for sure. Yeah, because I I think I think something like that is amazing. Oh, if I could get iOS in the car, that's gonna be amazing. Yeah, you could just drive off a bridge with the Apple mapping system. <laughs> uh, let's let's do our their maps. And- their map directions is just compared to Google atrocious. Yeah, well, I, I think everything compared to Google at this point with with mapping. Hey, John, you know what time it is? Picks of the week. 
Picks of the week. This is the portion of the show. We pick a product, a, a website, a anything that we liked and feature it. Uh, John, would you like to go first this week? Sure, I can go first. Okay. Um, so when Apple announced the iPhone 5C and 5S, they came out with these new cool cases for the 5C so that you could still show the color of your iPhone that you got with the particular case that you got on it. And one of these cases that they presented has these weird holes in the back of it, of course, to show the color of your, your phone, which I thought was very bizarre and everything. But I saw an application for, for your iPhone that makes brilliant use of that case, and it's called Flip Case. And it allows you to play Connect 4 on your iPhone using that case, which I think is just absolutely brilliant. You can see here in the video, you just take it, your case, put it on the front of your phone, and you can play Connect 4. That's absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm like, I'm totally sold on this now. Like, <laughs> I kind of want one of these. Do you really? I, I totally hated this case at first, but now that I can play Connect 4 with it, I'm like, oh, this makes so much more sense. Like, uh, you, you buy the case to play Connect 4. It's cool. Do, do you this. love Connect 4? Is that is that like a thing? That, that was one of my favorite games growing up as a kid. I love Connect. I, yeah, you can get an application that does all that for you. But how much cooler is taking the case that you have for your phone and playing Connect 4 with it? I think it's very creative use of uh, an awful case. I, I actually it's think it's, case. It, it is cool. I wonder if they're going to develop some other kind of games with it, you know? I, I'd be interested if they could do that. Yeah. I think they should. Yeah. I think they should, too. It's, it's free, and you can get it in the uh, iTunes App Store. Yeah. But you need the case. Yes. You need the case. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> if you know. uh, very but how cool. ingenious is that? I think it's great. I mean, I did not think about that when I saw this case. But now that you see this, it makes perfect sense. I think I think it does. I, I'm a fan of it, John. All right, Andrew, what's your pick? <laughs> uh, my pick this week, guys, uh, something that just got released last night. Uh, I, you know, the software that we use here in the studio is called Wirecast. We use Wirecast to control all our stuff from switching cameras like this. I could do things like this. Uh, I could do, you know, all our streaming is done via Wirecast, all our encoding, everything. And the latest version of it got released. Wirecast 5 is now available uh, via Telestream's website. Telestream.net is a website. And there's a ton of new features in this version of Wirecast. Uh, X264 video encoding. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. Actually, I did go old Joe to Max out over there. <laughs> Give people a seizure with the camera. Uh, <laughs> Continue. Yeah. Uh, so it, it has all, you know, all new features. X264 video encoding, uh, new UI, HD screen capturing, web stream sources, there's a lot of new stuff. I know I know you've been using it, John. What do you think of it? I love Wirecast. Compared to um, the previous software we were using, Wirecast is the bomb. Oh, I don't yeah, know if I yeah. can say that still, but... No, it, I love it. 1992 <laughs> called. They want their sayings <laughs> back, but... I, I, I think it's... I, so I've been using it for some time now as part of the beta program, and uh, it, it's, it's actually quite impressive how well it handles high-definition video production. Uh, we're able to do so much more now at, at, at a much higher quality than we used to, you know, for, since moving over from the other guys that we were using. But uh, very, very impressed with it. We're going to be doing a more hands-on review and posting it on our website. But th just initially, you know, the last couple hours uh, on my main production box, solid. I mean, really good. Uh, again, you could go to Telestream's website, Wirecast 5, and that's my pick of the week. Cool. Uh, we're done. Hey, uh, hey, guys, I appreciate you, everybody tuning in. You can subscribe to our show at gfqnetwork.com. We have all the links to subscribe. We're on I iOS. We're on Android. Wherever your podcasts are available, we have apps everywhere also. So if you put in the GFQ Network app, you can find it. Uh, I want to also ask you guys to help us out, support us, by using our Amazon affiliate link. You can do that by going to gfq.co slash Amazon. Uh, it stores a, it stores a little cookie, I think. That's what that's what they do, right? I don't know. I don't know these things. And when you buy something, we get a tiny little credit from it. Somebody recently bought three MacBook Pros, and we got I think like six percent from the sale, which is fantastic. 
We're able to do upgrades like buy new microphones and buy cases for John. <laughs> John loves the cases. So it really helps us out. And I know a lot of you guys are using it. GFQ.co slash Amazon. Hey, if you're if you're on our website right now, just click on that Amazon link and you know it'll it'll remember the next time you go to Amazon for us to get the credit. Yeah, bookmark it. That's the word I'm looking for. John, uh, thank you for joining me today. People can follow you yep. on Twitter at Suncast, where you yep, that's talk S-U-N-K-A-S-T, about K A S T. Where you talk about way. everything you hate. The yeah. very angry Twitter feed. What can I say? I'm a very angry person. You are. You're you're just so mad always. You can follow it's all me. your fault, yeah, Andrew. I know, I know. You, you make can, me so angry. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. Uh, and that's it, guys. We're, we'll see you all next week. Good night.